For this video, I take a retrospective look at Cypress Gardens Adventure Park, formerly located in Today I'm traveling back in time. I'm going back to revisit Cypress Gardens Adventure Park. This park existed in Winter Haven, Florida from 2004 through about 2008. It's always kind of an unusual process when you go back and revisit a failure. The original Cypress Gardens Park uh, closed down around 2003. Uh, tourism had dropped significantly from the 9-11 attacks and the park just couldn't compete. So the owners of Wild Adventures theme park in Valdosta, Georgia purchased Cypress Gardens and tried to use the same formula that transformed their petting zoo into a full-fledged theme park. They were putting a lot of effort into the transformation of Cypress Gardens, but at the end of the day they just ran out of money. Cypress Gardens uh, filed bankruptcy around 2007. A uh, pump and dump real estate company purchased them and chopped it up and made a mess of the park. Legoland bought the uh, leftovers after they had uh, run it into the ground by around 2009. While Cypress Gardens Adventure Park was a pretty hit or miss experience, Legoland is even worse. Such a, a poor version of Legoland. I've been to several of the other parks. The Florida one is just, you can tell it's a retrofitted existing park because there's a lot of really poorly laid out features in the park. All the outdoor Legoland sculptures are really poorly maintained. The Florida humidity and heat and sun is just more intense than uh, they get at the other Legoland parks from what I can tell. Uh, maybe the California park is on the same level, but compared to uh, the uh, Legoland parks in Europe, Florida park just looks run down. I don't know if it's because of poor maintenance or whatever. The other thing you'll notice is you know, people come to Orlando for Disney World. And when you go to Disney World and then you take your kids to Legoland, this looks like a carnival. It's such a cheap looking park. And that was the same knock for Cypress Gardens, but Cypress Gardens didn't charge Disney admission prices. The purpose of this video isn't to knock Merlin Entertainment. I am grateful that they decided to come in and purchase Cypress Gardens and try to turn it into Legoland. I just feel like they're missing the point when it comes to a theme park. It should be a family experience and by focusing exclusively on 12 year olds and younger, it really makes people over the age of 12 feel like they're dragged along for something that really doesn't suit them and they really they really need to kind of loosen it up because if you go to Magic Kingdom it's clearly intended for kids but there's still plenty of stuff for adults to see and do but at Legoland you know most of the shows are really too kiddy that adults are just not going to enjoy it at Cypress Gardens it was definitely more mainstream when it came to the ice skating shows and the animal shows and all the other things that they did I really think that they should have studied Cypress Gardens a little better and retained some of the more mainstream attractions and shows. Yep. Cypress Gardens Adventure Park was located on Lake Eloise and the nice part about riding this century wheel ferris wheel was you could really get some amazing views of the park. You could see you know, the island of the sky, you could see the, the roller coasters, you can see so many things from the top of this Ferris wheel. It really was a great experience. And it's a shame that uh, 
we lost this Ferris wheel when the park was converted from Cypress Gardens into Legoland. Alright, so that's enough of the Legoland talk. I'm going to focus exclusively on Cypress Gardens moving forward. Right now we're looking at the Century Wheel. This was the Ferris Wheel at Cypress Gardens. This was the Galaxy Spin Coaster. Uh, this Wild Mouse Coaster was relocated to Fun Spot on Highway 192 in Kissimmee, if I'm not mistaken. This CP Huntington train ride was pretty neat. It uh, did a grand tour of the rides area. Fun fact, when uh, the park was open as Cypress Gardens Adventure Park, they actually had two of these trains running simultaneously, and there was apparently a low-speed collision. There were no injuries. I do remember it making the newspapers and news shows at the time. These plantation gardens date back to the original style of park. When the park first opened, it was just botanical gardens, and it gradually evolved into more of a theme park over time. Another thing that the Cypress Gardens was known for was its electric boat rides through the botanical gardens. The boat ride never operated when uh, the park was in its adventure park phase. It last operated I believe in 2003. There was extensive hurricane damage uh, to the canals and that's why they couldn't get the electric boats going. The park was hit by three hurricanes when they were rebuilding it into the adventure park. That's actually how the wooden roller coaster got its name, the Triple Hurricane. It's named after the three hurricanes that uh, passed through Cypress Gardens in 2004. Uh, the Triple Hurricane was the only wooden structure in the park that didn't sustain any damage. The park did take substantial hurricane damage, and uh, that was the uh, main reason cited in the bankruptcy filing in 2007. The insurance company basically stiffed the owners of the bill the new owners of the park had to spend about $25 million in hurricane repairs just to be able to open it for the 2004 season. Right now we're looking at the Nature's Way area of Cypress Gardens Adventure Park. This area was completely renovated in the transition to the Adventure Park and they did spend quite a bit of money uh, improving the sidewalks and animal enclosures. This is the dockage for the ferry boat that used to run from the south side of the park to the north side. They also had a dinner cruise boat that uh, launched from this dock as well. Here's a view of the Triple Hurricane. I'm standing under the roof of Pope Station. This is one of the two train stations that were located in the Adventure Grove area. Mr. Pope was the original founder of the Cypress Gardens Park in the 1930s. The Triple Hurricane was the smaller of the two wooden roller coasters. It was the first one to open in 2004. Starliner was roughly twice its size. The sad irony is Starliner cost millions to rebuild and it was only open for about a year, opening in 2007 until the park completely closed in 2008. In hindsight, most people cite Starliner as the misstep that ultimately caused the park to close. If they hadn't taken on all that debt created by the coaster construction, the park probably could have held on for years. This is the Starliner. It looked brand new with that fresh coat of white paint. This was a historic John Allen coaster design. I still can't believe they scrapped a one-year-old wooden roller coaster. Every plank of wood on this thing was brand new. It was completely rebuilt from the ground up. You can definitely tell that they were going for that old school seaside amusement park look. And uh, they executed it fairly well considering the lack of money they were working with.
This rides area was the old parking lot for the original Cypress Gardens. When they transformed it into the Adventure Park, a much larger parking lot was constructed on the southernmost portion of the property. You're looking at Storm Surge right now. This was Cypress Gardens Spinning Rapids ride. This ride was relocated to an amusement park in the United Kingdom. When the Storm Surge was constructed back in 2004, it was the world's tallest spinning rapids ride. It no longer holds that title. The largest rapid ride in the United States now is currently Infinity Falls at SeaWorld Florida. I filmed all this footage on the final weekend that Cypress Gardens Adventure Park was open and uh, they were already starting to shut down the rides early that night. This ride was relocated to Thorpe Park in the United Kingdom. What I find kind of interesting is usually when a ride like this is relocated it gets a new name but over in Thorpe Park it's also called the Storm Surge. You'll definitely notice that uh, for a park that was bankrupt, everything looked brand new and was very clean. This ride area was only five years old when it was completely shut down. I did go to this park a lot, and it was very rare to see any rides break down. This roller coaster was called the Okeechobee Rampage. You'll notice that it was painted in the same colors as the Florida Gators. College football is really popular around here. It was a decent little coaster. You know, standard Vacoma roller skater. The financial problems for this park are pretty obvious throughout its history as the Adventure Park. You'll notice that uh, for a lot of the roller coasters, the stations had roof supports for roofs and never got built. They had to cut costs somewhere. A couple rides, like Starliner, they put a tarp up where the roof was supposed to be, and that's pretty much as good as it got. So what was the bottom line on this park? Well, they went bankrupt, and uh, because of that, this park has a pretty lousy reputation online from a bunch of experts who probably never went to the park. Coming from someone who actually went to this park a lot, I can tell you that uh, the Adventure Park version of it was my favorite iteration. I grew up with this park. I started going here in the 1980s when I was a kid, back when it was owned by publisher HBJ. Back then it was just mostly a, a botanical garden. I did think the rides were a great idea. I really diversified the things you could do at the park. And uh, given the choice between the 1980s configuration of just botanical gardens versus Legoland versus Adventure Park, I think the, even the botanical gardens by themselves is still a better family outing than Legoland. Legoland's $125 to get in. The botanical gardens back then were an $8.95 daily admission. I really am skeptical that uh, Legoland Florida survives this particular recession that we're now starting to go through with the pandemic. They're charging the same admission fees as Universal Studios and Disney World. And the park is just terrible. I don't see them hanging on very much longer. I mean, you can clearly see by this footage that uh, this place was kind of schlocky, but they got away with it because they were only a third of the price. We're gonna wrap this video up with a tribute to the Starliner. The Starliner was one of my favorite wooden roller coasters of all time. Uh, it was originally built in Panama City, Florida in 1963 as part of the Merkel Strip Amusement Park. It was completely rebuilt and refurbished for Cypress Gardens Adventure Park. When Cypress Gardens closed in 2008, Legoland tore it out. There was a plan to relocate it back to its original home in Panama City Beach, but those plans fell through. Unfortunately, this coaster no longer survives. It was completely scrapped and sent to the trash heap. Thanks for turning the clock back with me on Cypress Gardens Adventure Park. If you liked what you saw today, please like and subscribe.